Hey everyone, welcome to a new no-code tutorial for Noco HQ. And today we're going to take, at a uh, take a look at a specific feature in Bubble, which is relatively new. Um, and it's called, um, or basically it allows you to um, do things when something in your database uh, changes. Okay, and this might sound, sound a bit abstract right now, but let me explain. So usually what you have in your Bubble application, you have um, things happening after um, your user clicks something or a certain condition is true. We also have backend workflows which allow you to schedule certain things. Uh, so maybe schedule an email, schedule um, some sort of workflow in the future, again, depending on conditionals. And then there's another thing which is relatively new, which allows you to um, automatically do something when something in a database changes. So let's let me give you a good example so um, a good example of something where you would like want to use this feature or might want to use this feature is um, we also actually have that in one of our live applications is for example let's say you have um, you have a marketplace okay uh, or like an online shop or something you're selling something a product and when the product is out of stock um, let's say you have um, a database uh, field called out of stock which is yes or no and then when, when this product gets out of stock, um, this database field changes to yes, and users obviously can't order it anymore. But what you wanna do to have better user experience and to re-engage customers once the product is back in stock, interested customers, you wanna have a button maybe on your page which says um, notif notify me once this product is available again, okay? And what you can then do is you can watch this database entry for this one product and then immediately trigger a notification, an email or whatever you want to do, um, once the product is back in stock, okay? And how do we know uh, if it's back in stock? Because in our database, the out of stock field changes, okay? And that's basically what this is going to be about this tutorial. We're going to focus on this one example I just um, explained, but obviously there are many more use cases that you can, uh, for which you can use this feature, it's quite helpful. And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. Uh, I'm gonna start off by simply building this um, this page here. Um, let's keep it as simple as possible. So I'm gonna call this um, the simple product here at the top. Okay, let's say this is a product page. Um, I'm gonna make this bigger, okay? And uh, yeah, it actually doesn't matter. I'm just gonna add an image here just so we have a bit of an idea what this is about. So I'm gonna have an image here which is gonna show the product, okay. All right, let's center that. Okay, and let's have a button here. And this button will say, buy now. All right. Um, now we have to head to our database. And right now we just have um, user, and this is something I created before, you can ignore that, but I'm gonna create a new type and I'm gonna call this product, okay. And a product consists of a name, okay. It consists of a price. Um, you could now add, it consists of a, of a description, there is an image, there is reviews. Obviously you can do that, but that's not point of the, the point of the tutorial. What we're focusing on now, we're gonna create another field and this field is gonna be currently out of stock, okay? And the field type is gonna be Boolean, so yes or no. And default, it's gonna be no, okay? So we're gonna go with this, way of, of, of handling this in our database, you could also just have a quantity data field of type number. Um, and then you could say, all right, when the quantity for this product is zero, um, then I want to um, show the out of stock button or whatever. We're just gonna go with this. The functionality will actually be completely identical. Okay, um, great. So um, let's also actually create a product. So just so we have that for demoing purposes, I'm going to click, click all products. I'm going to click new entry. I'm going to say um, this is a test product. The price is 100 and currently out of stock is no. Okay. Um, and we're actually going to um, head over back here to the design tab. We can actually say, okay, this page is of type a product, okay? And the title is gonna be not simple product, but actually current page product's name, okay? And then buy now for whatever dollar the price is, okay? Um, so let's just preview this page. Right now it's empty. So I'm gonna go to 
the database to copy the unique ID here and simply paste that here so we can use that product. Okay, just give me a second. What I'm doing now is actually irrelevant, but I'm just uh, loading here our product page so that we can work with it. So this is just demo here right now. Okay, so this works now. We have our test product here, which I just created in the database. We have this button buy now for $100, which doesn't do anything as of now. Okay, so let me jump back to the actual um, to the actual functionality. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, um, okay, when, uh, uh, let's add a conditional, when um, the current page products currently out of stock is yes. I want to have a different text and I want to have a different uh, background color. Okay, let's have a grayish color and the text should be out of stock. Notify me once it's available. Okay. So it's actually a bit bigger. And now we want to actually uh, add a pop up here. And this pop up we're going to call notify me. And we're going to have a text here which is going to say um, enter your email. We will notify you once the product is in stock again, okay? So don't mind my UI here. That's not the point of the tutorial, but at some minimal design should be implemented. So I'm going to add the input here, which is going to be uh, the email input where a user can enter his email. So enter email. And then we have a button here, which is going to say submit. All right, so let's continue with the actual um, button here. So we're gonna say, okay, when this is pressed, we wanna just show this pop-up that we just created, the notify me pop-up. However, only when the current page products currently out of stock is yes. You could then here add, um, when this button is clicked, proceed to check out when current page products currently out of stock is no, okay? But we're not gonna focus on that in this tutorial. I'm gonna open the uh, pop-up here, notify me. Um, and then we're going to have, um, or actually we're going to need another data type. So I'm going to head over here to data type because we want to have a list of um, people that want to be notified. Okay, so we're going to have a new type of no, uh, new, uh, emails of users notify. Okay, and this will just be a list of emails and, um, and also a product that they want to be notified for. Okay. So let me just quickly explain what I did here. I create a new data type because every time um, a user wants to um, be notified once a product is in stock again, we want to create a new data type which just consists of this email of the user that wants to be notified and the product for which he or she wants to be notified. Okay, but more of, of that in a second. I'm going to head back here and under submit, I'm going to cl click all right. When this is clicked, we want to create a new thing. And we want to create the emails of users notify. We want to set the email to our input, enter emails value and the product just to current page product. All right. Okay. That was the easy part. That was um, simple bubble functionality. Um, nothing too hard. I just forgot to add one thing. We want to actually then uh, reset the inputs and we want to hide the pop-up. Okay. Now let's actually jump to the uh, real functionality, the real part. So. The first thing you want to do is you want to head over to settings. You want to go to API and you want to enable workflow API and backend workflows. We're not going to use workflow APIs, but we're going to use backend workflows. Okay. Once you check that, you have a new menu here called backend workflows where you can define backend workflows. In other tutorials, we took a look at API endpoints. We took a look at recurring events. And as you can already see, we have this new thing here, database trigger event. Okay. So let's click that. Um, the database trigger event is basically what we're going to use here, which is triggered when something happens in the database. Okay. And what happens in the database, that is up to us. We can decide that in a second. We can define the rules. Um, but I'm going to go with you through all the different parameters and fields you have to enter. Okay. So 
we have first of all the event name relatively straightforward that's just however you want to call it okay i'm just going to call it um 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 product product goes product is back in stock is back in stock okay um also bear in mind you have to have a um premium plan on bubble to actually do these workflows then um so just that you know you have to define the type of um database thing we're going to work with yeah and you might think of using this one uh, but that's not what we're going to use we're actually going to use the product because we're going to work with the products field out of stock okay so the type of the data or the data type is going to be product okay and that's all you have to fill in here and you can now actually head at back here and then um yeah define what you want to do what i'm going to do in this case actually i'm going to create another um api endpoint okay and i'm going to say all right this endpoint name is send emails to noti to notify users okay i don't want to expose it as a public endpoint this can be wrong with our authentication ignore privacy rule and i want to add a few parameters i want to say all right i want to send this to an email to the user i want to send this for the product whatever this product is okay and that's it I'm now going to click here and say, okay, so send emails to notify users. I want to say, okay, I wanna, when this is triggered, this endpoint, I want to send an email to my parameter user. So whatever the user is, sorry, the email is, okay. The sender name is whatever your, your company is called, okay. Um, subject is product's name is back in stock. And then we can say, hey, Product name is back in stock. Purchase now at products link. All right. Um, I'm just going to continue, and at the end, I'm going to explain exactly why I did this the way I did it, and um, yeah, what the reason behind it is. So let's go back here to the trigger. And now. I want to do something. I want to say, all right, when a product is back in stock, we haven't defined that yet already, but let's do something. We want to, when this database is triggered, we want to do something. We want to schedule an API workflow on a list. Okay. The list we want to run that on of the type of things we want to run it on is emails of users notify. Okay. Let's actually head to the bottom here. We want to do this only when, and now you have two things you probably never saw before. We have the product before the change and the product now. Keep in mind, we are doing this thing on the, on the product, on a product data type, and we can now define when to do something. Okay, so what database entry for a product should change in order for this to be triggered. So we could, so in our case, this is going to be, we want to schedule this API workflow on a list only when the product before it's change, before this trigger, currently out of stock was yes. And the product now currently out of stock is no. Okay. So how, ca how can you understand that? Basically we have the trigger point, which is in the middle and we have something, we have a status before and a status after. And the status before changing to status after should be the trigger event. In our case, we want to trigger this event, this API workflow. If our product was out of stock before, but now it has suddenly turned into stock again. Right? So now it's, it's in stock again. Okay. So this is the change we want to watch in our database. And this is the change where we want to trigger a workflow once this takes place. Okay, you could use all of the um, data fields here for products. So for example, you could say, do this if the price is was bef below 10 before and now it's over 10. Okay, so you can, you can define all kinds of events that should be watched. We're going to focus on our out of stock event. Okay, and if this is the case, if something was out of stock and is now back in stock, then this should be triggered. So what... What do we want to do? We want to run this list here um, on a 
on the list of emails. So do a search for emails of users notify with the constraint that the product should be the current page product or the product now. You can that's the product we're working with right now. Okay. We don't want to notify all the users that signed up for all the products, but just the users that signed up for this current product. Okay. The API workflow we want to run is then the send emails to notify users. Scheduled date is just current date time. The interval just defines how how much seconds should take place before each um, email is sent. You can just have put like four or five seconds here. Um, as you can see already, the higher the number is, the less strain on your application. So we can increase that to 10. I want to ignore privacy rules when running the workflow. And I want to give, because this endpoint requires an email and a product, the email we provide is just this emails of users notify email. And the product is just the product now. All right. So let's go through everything now again. When the product was before out of stock and is now back in stock, we want to schedule an API workflow on a list of things. The list we want to run this on is the users that signed up for this product. Okay. We then want to schedule this workflow. We want to schedule it now. This is the interval we want to schedule it in. And the email we provide is just whatever we get out of the search here. So this emails of users notify email and the product is just going to be the product we're working with. Okay. What happens now? This is triggered. It receives an email or list of, of emails and a product. And it's now going to send an email to all the pro users that signed up to the list for the specific product. And they will all get an email saying, hey, um, our simple product is back in stock. You can now buy it at this link. Okay. And that's basically it. One last thing I want to add now, um, just to yeah, have, have it perfect, is I want to then delete a list of things here. And the list of things I want to delete is emails of users notify um, where, so let's do a search for email of users notify where the product is um, the product that we provided here. Um, hopefully that's not confusing. Let me just explain. If a user signs up to be notified, if a product is back in stock, and then he or she gets the email that's back in stock, this user should be removed from this list because if he or she would stay on this li list, if we don't delete this list, he or she would always be notified every time it gets back in stock. And um, that's not the way um, this functionality should work. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, yeah, to be honest, that's it. We, we can take a look at, at our bubble application here. Um, we won't be able to test this. I can ensure you it works, um, but uh, we're not on a premium plan here with this application. Um, but it shouldn't be a problem. I'm just going to click here uh, by now. Nothing happens because this product is in stock. If I go to data, our database and I change this product to uh, out of stock, the button should now say out of stock. Notify, once, notify me once available. I'm going to click it. We have this um, pop up here. I'm going to say um, just info at nocohq.com and let's submit that and now we should have um, our uh, all emails of users notifies should contain our email and this product and now if somehow this goes back into stock so this changes to no um, all of this will will be triggered okay so this will be triggered an email will be sent to this list for this product in uh, in, in this case just our email and this will be the content of the email and then this list will be deleted. And that's basically it, to be honest. Um, I know a few new things um, might be a bit confusing, so rewatch it maybe the video to get a better understanding, but this is quite a really useful uh, functionality with which you can do many things. So um, it's, it's a great, great feature, great skill um, to learn if, if you um, are building a bubble application. So um, yeah. That's basically it. Um, I hope you learned something and I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial of NoCoHQ.